We will call this meeting to order. This is the informational meeting for Tuesday, September 17th. Wow, I'm moving ahead too fast here. Anyway, I'd like to welcome everybody in the audience and everything here. The uh, chair is going to take some uh, liberties with the agenda. Uh, item number two, staff report from Lori. We're going to move that down to uh, underneath the presentation sections as she begins to uh, give us an update about the election agreement. Um, and then uh, we are going to move uh, presentation C there. We're going to, going to move that up after the committee reports. So we're going to start out with the uh, fiscal committee. Councillor Aguilar, please. Thank you, Councillor Antiman. On uh, Tuesday, September 3rd, we had a meeting of the fiscal committee. At that meeting, we had a report by Brent O'Neill, who provided background information regarding TIF 17, um, stating it was originally approved by the City Council in October of 2012. At that time, the TIF was for roughly 30 acres of underdeveloped property, uh, formerly known as Williams Pipeline. Uh, the taxable value of the property at that point was less than $1 million with minimal annual property taxes. With the projected uh, projects, the taxable value is projected at $30 million with uh, $550,000 in new annual property taxes. After that presentation, we had open discussion by uh, the members of the committee and we discussed FEMA funds. Thank you, Sue. Is there any, any questions for Sue? Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Aguilar. Okay, uh, Public Services Committee. Councillor Anderson, please. <clears throat> Public Services meeting was held uh, Tuesday, September 10th. Uh, the main item on the agenda was the taxi cab ordinance review. Uh, Jim David gave an uh, overview of the changes that are proposed for the ordinance and there was some open discussion uh, testimony by some of the uh, cab owners. Uh, we are going to continue meeting with them to discuss these changes, uh, taking a look at uh, things like fare boxes. Uh, there's a lot of uh, new technology within the uh, business now and also uh, taking a look at oversight. Uh, right now, uh, when uh, a cab company does uh, license in Sioux Falls, their only, only interaction with the city is applying and getting that license. Uh, the background checks are done by the police department uh, for each driver and owner, but uh, other than that, there is uh, no oversight, no inspection of records, uh, no inspection of vehicles, and those are some of the things that we're, we're looking into. Good. Thank you, Councillor Anderson. Are there any questions for Kenny? Okay, there being none, we will move into our presentations, and I am going to kick it off with uh, Director Cotter, uh, and he's going to give us a very interesting presentation on the Levy Systems Project Improvements Update. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you, Council Chair and Council... Council members, we do have a big update for you today. It's been a long time coming um, with the extensive work that's been done to our uh, levy system and flood control systems throughout the city. And we've got our project partners that have been working closely with us here today. All right, first I'd like to do some introductions, some key introductions that have been with this project um, and really have helped us see this through. First and foremost from the City of Sioux Falls, Tom Berklin, our project manager. And we've got some key people if they could stand as we uh, do the introductions. Tom has guided this project for public works uh, from the very beginning of the authorization in early 2000 and has done a remarkable job. We've got three key individuals here today from the Omaha District of the Army Corps of Engineers. And if they would stand as I introduce them. First, Mr. Ted Streckfuss. He's the Deputy District Engineer. He's the Chief of Programs and Project Management. He's got an extensive staff. He's been committed to this project. He was also in town when 2011, um, they near, nearly needed to spin up the advanced measures to protect us from the high waters that were uh, potential for Sioux Falls and knows the city well. Uh, next is uh, Robert Madsen. He's the Project Manager for the project. 
and Colleen Horhan. She's a hydraulic engineer. We've got our congressional uh, delegation representatives here, if they could stand. Ben Reddy and Sharon Boyson. All right, one of the important times when, uh, sorry, in, in uh, our other delegation with Mr. Nome. All right, one of the opportunities that came with this project is the timing. We had very good competitive bids, and we've got our We've got our general contractor that uh, ran the operations, uh, Rungi Enterprise, represented by Bob Roth. And their key subcontractor, also of Sioux Falls, the heavy division of Sioux Falls Construction, Jared Gusso. He's a VP of major structures, including new dam and upgrades to the diversion dam. Over 80% of the work has been completed by local contractors. Just want to thank everyone that's come today. It's been a long time since we've provided a comprehensive update. That's essentially the, the purpose today, but there's been a number of um, steps and challenges along the way that we want to bring, uh, bring you some new information today. First of all, just as you look at the levee system, the original channel of the Big Sioux River essentially flows into the city from the north and down that orange area. No improvements were needed to that area. Um, phase one in the green area, that's the major spillway, and that's down just north of John Morrell. That was one of the first projects that was raised and fortified to handle the additional and expected floodwaters. Uh, down south from 229, heading north to the confluence of Big Sur River and Skunk Creek in yellow, that's considered phase two. That's also where that uh, dam was constructed um, that was on the cover page of the presentation. And then phase three is, uh, was fortifying the diversion dam and the diversion uh, channel that goes uh, to the east and to the, uh, of the airport. That's in red. Okay, uh, some key things that have happened along the way with the FEMA map updates and funding challenges. Um, for a number of years, the project was receiving small allocations from Congress to ultimately incorporate the improvements that were needed that were identified in additional modeling. Essentially, when the levees were originally built, there was only about 10 years of storm data for them to anticipate what those high flows would be. Um, over time and over an, an additional 50 years worth of storm data, it was determined that the levees needed to be raised to ultimately pass what they expected the um, flood uh, flow would ultimately be. So that ultimately generated the project and, and the project began. After Katrina, um, FEMA was mandated to update maps across the country uh, to make sure all their flood insurance maps were accurately reflected. Unfortunately for Sioux Falls, that meant over 1,500 properties went into the new floodplain, and at the time, about three quarters of a billion dollars of property um, automatically had to start paying, paying flood insurance. That was a major problem. We talked about it extensively at the city council level and methods that could be done. We ultimately did meet with the Corps of Engineers in D.C. and asked them the question if we if we advanced not only our share but the federal share of, of the project funding, would they consider paying us back? And ultimately, um, their, comment, their commitment was they would. Ultimately, it was budget dependent, Congress dependent. And so in December of 2009, with the city council support, understanding the risk that we may not get paid back, that the city passed one of the series of that blood, of that bond ordinance, which was $18.2 million. All right, now just a brief history on construction. Uh, the, the project was ultimately authorized back in 1996 to raise and fortify the system. The new PCA agreement, the Project Cooperation Agreement for construction was developed in August of 2000. Phase one, the Raising of the spillway and fortifying the spillway started in 2001 and ultimately was completed in 2003. 
Phase two has been extensive work that's, that's involved the levees that started south down by 229, progressed north to Skunk Creek, and then was a portion of Skunk Creek, which also included uh, the, the dam, started in 2006, was completed in July of 2012. And then phase three, which has just been worked on extensively, started in July of 2011 and was completed in July of this year. This is probably a very nice slide for Tom Birkeland, our, our representative, to be able to capture also the local contractors and the project designers. The main project, the thrust of the project, is now substantially complete. We are working with the Corps of Engineers on some ancillary small structure upgrades, but for the uh, large project, uh, fortifying the levees, fortifying the dams, the outlet, the spillway, and ultimately building in the new dam near the confluence, of Skunk Creek and the Big Sioux River, the project is substantially complete. <clears throat> project costs and cost shares, just to, remind, um, just to remind you what the project entailed, it was approximately $62.5 million. The agreement that was made with the federal government was that they would fund 75% of it and the local share would be 25%. We're fortunate that the state split the local share with us, so the City of Sioux Falls would come up with 12.5 percent and the state would come up with 12.5 percent and they've made good on their portion. Uh, the city did advance approximately $10 million to the federal government for their share to accelerate completing this work to ultimately uh, recognize all with the new FEMA maps. So many properties went into the floodplain um, and had that step not been taken, and it was a huge risk by the city council at that time, understanding that we may not get paid back to recognize that over time, uh, those dollars potentially would have been paid into insurance premiums as opposed to construction. Uh, I think, too, it was a very opportune time from a construction standpoint, bidding environment to do the work in 2009 through 2013, and a third benefit to do it with local contractors. All right. Now, now what step needs to occur is that the levy system evaluation step is once you ultimately construct the improvements, it has to go through an evaluation. Corps of Engineers is currently working on the levy system evaluation, meaning what's been designed and ultimately constructed needs to be certified. Um, with the small structures that need to be upgraded that have been identified through the certification evaluation process, those will be all completed. Um, by summer of 2014. The current floodplain in the city exists um, is the shaded area and essentially a large footprint of that will come back inside the levees once they're certified and ultimately recognized through FEMA's review. Uh, Jeff Schmidt would be guiding you through this next step, which is the change to the flood insurance rate maps. Uh, the remapping of the area should remove the extensive area from the floodplain. Again, once the levees are recognized um, that they can uh, pass that flow, that floodplain will essentially come within the levees for the majority of the area that's been affected. FEMA will review the levee system evaluation report prepared by the Corps of Engineers. Uh, FEMA has a process for this, and this could take up to 24 months or longer. We did, um, a question that Councilor Karski had was, um, can the city ultimately accelerate this review? And we understand, we have placed some calls, but the Denver office is uh, inundated with the issues that they're dealing with in Colorado. Um, but we do understand that FEMA does contract out this work to a private consultant. And so we're going to continue to explore that to see if we can accelerate this review and potentially reduce this 24 months to something less. All right, hopefully that gives you a good background about where we've been. Now I'd like to bring forward Ted Streckfuss to give you a funding update um, on this project. Ted? First, I'd like to thank you very much for, for having me up here today. It's a, it's a great honor to be able to, to speak with you. This has been a great partnership 
Um, usually when you talk about the civil works arena, you start out as a small lad and you end up when the job is done, ready to retire and move on. So it's, you know, in, in a short 10 to 13, 14 years to be able to go from inception to completion on a project of this magnitude, uh, kudos to, to the entire team. You know, it's a fantastic news story. Um, it had already been presented that we were looking at uh, a total program cost of about $62 million. That's a substantial investment on the part of the community, the state, uh, and the federal government to provide that, that flood risk reduction. And I think that it will pay benefits to the community well into the future. Uh, the good news story that I bring uh, today is that the funds that were advanced by the city of Sioux Falls, there's always that caveat that basically says, well, we will repay, we the federal government will repay depending upon the availability of funds. And that requires a congressional action. It requires working through the Corps of Engineers and our work plan process. And it's been my experience, and, and Bob, the project manager, can talk to in his career, and he doesn't exactly have no gray hair. Uh, he's seen it twice. Uh, this makes about the second time I've seen it in my career as well. Uh, and long story short, within the December time frame, we're going to be able to provide a check back to uh, the city of Sioux Falls in the five to eight million dollar range. You have to go through the entire auditing process. You have to work within the, the LERDs, which is the um, looking at the real estate and, and all of the elements that go into in, ensuring that the project is closed out property, properly in accordance with all the financial statements. With that being stated, though, we're able to dispense that five to eight million dollars and then ultimately upon closure of the books be able to provide a final check probably total sum of in, in the $10 million range, which to me is a great news story, uh, something that, again, I don't traditionally see, uh, but something that I thought that you'd be interested to hear uh, in, in terms of it being good news. So with that, I'll turn the, turn the mic back over, and uh, unless you had questions regarding that specific aspect. Thank you. Well, it's been uh, this has been this has been great news. That I'll still never forget the day we got the phone call that ultimately the Corps of Engineers called Tom Berklin. Tom Berklin called me and said, "Mark, are you sitting down?" And that's usually not a very good call to get in public works. But um, he said, "This is really good news. Um, the Corps of Engineers ultimately budgeted and will be paying us back for everything that we've advanced them on the flood control." And so, first and foremost, we wanted to highlight the partnership we've had with the Corps of Engineers, but we also want to highlight the partnership we had with the City Council. City Council took a huge risk um, and we're very appreciative. So I'd like the uh, body, if we could give you a round of applause if we could. Thank you, Director Cotter. Are there any questions for Mark? Councilor Staggers, please. Yeah, Mark, I just wanted to clarify, that's December we might be getting that? Okay, thank you very much. Yep. Are there any other questions? Thank you very much, gentlemen. Councillor Jamison, please. Not a comment, but maybe a, or not a question, but maybe a comment. Uh, you know, Kenny Anderson and I were here. We were on that council that took that uh, decision very seriously. Uh, but at the same time, when Fargo was talking about a levy system for themselves, and today they're struggling with a 500 to 800 million dollar project for themselves. Fargo has a bigger event center than we do, but we've got a better levy system than they do. And uh, anyway, I remember those days and uh, back in '09 when we did that, and and it was tough whether we should or shouldn't do it, and our partners whether they would step up or not. And I guess just as one of those guys that was here back then, I wanted to make sure I personally thank you for following through and finishing this up. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that, and, and believe me, I'm a, I'm a little hesitant. You know, the Corps of Engineers, you go into a public forum, I'm really not used to, you know, any kind of an accolade or, or, or a hand clap because, like I say, since, since 11, it's been, you know, it's been tough times. It's been a lot of water under the bridge, if you know what I'm saying, um, but I, I can't thank you enough. I mean, the Corps of Engineers, you know, we, we live to serve and provide the service to communities specific to Omaha District within, within my area of responsibility, and I take that responsibility seriously. We've got 
Over 1,200 great dedicated professionals working in the Omaha District Corps of Engineers providing this type of service to communities like Sioux Falls. And again, I'm thankful for great people up here that have worked so hard to make this project come, become a reality. And I'm very uh, respectful and, and positive about the team that we have in Omaha that was successful working with you to make it happen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great news. Director Cotter, you can come back anytime with that kind of Thank answer. you. Mr. Mayor, please, Mayor. If I could, I just wanted to recognize uh, the federal government. Uh, it, uh, at a time when there is so much uh, angst and uh, we hear about the distrust and we hear about the lack of getting things done, at least in the federal government, uh, I think we should take some time to recognize, of course, uh, uh, our representative, Senator Thune, Senator Johnson, Representative Noam, as well as the leaders before them, but um, the federal government followed through. Uh, they are actually paying us back, and for that, we're all blessed. 158,800 citizens of this town are safer. Uh, we don't know what big event is coming, but when it comes, we believe we're ready. So we definitely want to thank the federal government for their role, the state government for their role, and of course, Sioux Falls City Government for their role. Uh, Council, again, thank you for leading. Thank you for your vision. Uh, thank you for your confidence and ultimately trust in our government to, to make good things happen. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Mayor. Again, thank you very much. I do look forward. I know there's a little bit of work to be done. Mark has, continues to remind us of that. We hope to have most of the work done on the system, I believe, by sometime next summer, early in the summer is my belief. At the same breath, I know Councillor Karski uh, brought up to Mark, and Mark addressed it a little bit concerning the FEMA maps, the flood maps, and our concern about, uh, you know, the hit that our citizens have taken on that. And I want to encourage you, uh, Director, please uh, follow through with that if we can. I think this council would like to uh, get this taken care of and put to bed as soon as we possibly can. Thank you very much. Great news. Thank you very much. We're going to move up to our second presentation. We got a lot of good news today in this meeting, and I like these kinds of meetings. Uh, Lori Hogshead, if you could please come up, please. Uh, we've got a, a report on our election agreement uh, for the upcoming elections. Please, Lori. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I have a couple items to talk about, actually three items. Um, the first one I was going to talk about under the staff report was our ADA um, review of the vote centers. And ADA, just so I'll, I'll be referencing that quite often, stands for Americans with Disabilities Act. Last Wednesday, which was September 11th, I had the um, privilege of touring our vote centers with Dr. Um, Peter Blank and Jim Falakas. They're both out of New York City. They presented to you in the past. And we went to each of the vote centers in Sioux Falls, um, and we were accompanied by Bob Litz, the county auditor of Minnehaha, and Bob attended because he had already done some of his homework with these vote centers and also had done some measurements and that type of thing. He had great background uh, information that he could offer on this tour. Um, the types of things that we looked at, and this was in accordance with the Department of Justice ADA guidelines for polling places, um, which is really actually, I will say, is very interesting reading. So um, I, I enjoyed looking through it. Um, we looked at different things when we went to the different uh, locations, such as physical accessibility of the vote center. Um, took many measurements. I learned what the proper um, measurement, measurements were as far as inclines and that type of thing. Um, examined the parking, the parking lots. Are there enough spaces available? Van parking available? Um, looked at walkways, building entrances, corridors, hallways, you name it. We did get finished in one day, and that is only because we have, number one, we had a lot of background information ready for them ahead of time, um, and they were really, really pleased with, with the locations that we went to, you know, that we had done our homework ahead of time, and I credit Bob Litz with a lot of that, that he had gone through and and really look these places over before making the final. So our initial findings are that 12 of the 13 proposed vote centers were considered to be consistent with the ADA checklist. And that's not really bad news. We have good news to follow with that. 
Um, and then the vote centers, they love that they were evenly dispersed throughout the city um, and that, you know, our citizens will be able to vote at any one of these 13 vote centers. Um, each of the vote centers, as we have done, will have an auto mark available for persons with disabilities. Um, for example, someone with visual impairments or uh, physical dexterity problems, that type of thing. And then we had our notes and we did take, I, w I was the note taker, the note keeper. And we went to each location, and I'll just I'll just kind of mention you know what we what we noted on most of these. Um, we began at First Lutheran Church downtown, and Jim had toured that with us not too long ago. But um, there was a voting area that was in the library, and right away um, we realized that was too steep. But there's a great gym in that church that actually will work just fine. We can you know people walk right in, go to the gym. So that was, that was great. Um, Wesley United Methodist Church, was, which is on East 6th Street, um, that building, even though it's older, it is, it is actually set up very nice with an elevator. Um, we'll need to do a little modification to the parking lot to make room for a van, and we can assist them with that. And then there's also a concrete lip that needs to be repaired. Those are the types of things that you know, you and I don't think about, but if someone coming in with a walker catches their walker on that lip, down they'll go. And so that's something that we will um, work with them on having that repaired. And the Secretary of State's office has indicated they do have some funds available if any of these businesses or buildings, you know, need just a little bit of uh, money to, to make some of these repairs. Um, the community centers were outstanding. They did not identify any barriers, and that includes Kenny Anderson, Owate, Mari Carr, and Morningside were the community centers. Um, Sioux Falls Arena, that worked great. The only thing that they recommended was on election day that in the parking area where you could pull up and drop off people, that we just set up some signs for um, disabled parking. Just it, It's a little bit of a jaunt from the parking lot to the front door, and hopefully we can work with arena staff to do that on election days. Uh, Memorial Middle School was good. There was um, some concrete that led to the area where the voters would um, vote into the gym that was pretty broken up, and so we would just ask that that be repaired. Um, Peace Lutheran Church, that, that church was good, um, and that's on West 41st Street. Faith Baptist Church is on West 57th, and that's one of our, our top uh, locations, very busy. And the, the inside was great. The only thing we noticed was you need to have accessibility from the sidewalk to the door. And if you just took a straight shot, it was too steep. But uh, Jim Falakis went and he measured all throughout the parking lot and he came up with a route. It'll be a little path. They'll have to just kind of divert a little bit. And he recommends on election days that we either outline that in chalk or maybe duct tape something to indicate this is the pathway and the incline will be just fine that way. So um, it sounds like the church is willing to work with us on that. The one that we did not choose to continue using is Embrace Church, also on 57th, um, way out on East 57th. It used to be Gloria Day Lutheran Church. And Embrace was a new location. Actually, last spring, I believe, was the first time that we had used that um, for a school board election. And right away, the wheelchair cutout was too steep. He measured it and remeasured it and remeasured it, just hoping we could make it work, and we just couldn't. Um, but Gloria Day moved to a new building farther out on 57th, and I just received um, word from the pastor today. I just um, was able to speak to him, and they are very pleased to let us utilize this as a vote center. So that's really good news. Um, and he will, um, the pastor, when I spoke to him, just said, let us know the dates. And I said, we'll follow up with a letter this week. But he was really pleased that we asked him and uh, is happy to let us utilize that. So that was, that was really good. So thanks, Sue, for making a call for us, too. Um, I talked about the community centers. Asbury United Methodist Church, um, there were some issues with an area for van designated parking, and that's, that's something that I learned, that each, um, it needs to be a hatched area of a certain size and then area for the van. And again, we can work with them on whether we temporarily stripe it for that day or it's, or it's a change that they make permanently um, to their parking lot, and that's on Southwestern Avenue. Also, their pull weight, and I, I guess I did not know either, I learned this as well, that they can be set to different weights, so if you try to pull a door open and they had it set at seven pounds, and the standard is five pounds. So if you think a door pulls heavy, sometimes it probably does. It's, it's set a little heavy. So that, that can easily be modified. And then last but not least, we went to the Instructional Planning Center, and uh, no barriers 
in that location at all. So this is really good news, um, exciting on our part because we'll finally have a standardized, li standardized list of vote centers that we can use for each election. And, and I know that Dr. Blank and uh, Jim Falakis will be back probably later this winter, Dave, later this year, and they'll give a final you know, report on, on all the ADA. But they, you know, they seem to really enjoy the visit and we're just really pleased with all of our vote centers. So that was really good news. And that ties into um, the agreement. But before I get to that, I'll give you an update on, on petitions. Of course, we have the petitions in for the rezoning um, referendum at the property um, for the proposed Walmart store. And we're making some progress, but you can see that I had some other things that had come up this last week. And the ADA was really important to do. I, I thought, oh, this is the worst time, but it's something that's long-term that we will, you know, will utilize for our elections. And I, I just felt it was really important that I went with that day, took the time out, took the time out to get the reports put together. So um, I will be getting back to uh, petitions tomorrow. So. Uh, not a lot of progress at this point. All right, and then last but not least, the agreement. We have a pending agreement between the city of Sioux Falls and the Sioux Falls School District. And this has been deferred, see this is the fifth time, but it's the last time. And there were really good reasons for deferral. Um, we had actually considered it twice in November, once in December, then we thought, well, surely by February, you know, everything will be resolved. Well, not quite. Um, September, though, that was our goal, and we have got everything um, ironed out in this agreement. Some of the um, questions we had, we had just shortly before we um, ran this through had received the petitions for the snow gates, and at that time we still hadn't made a decision if we would be holding a special election or if we would uh, carry that over to the April 2014. So that was one issue. Um, and also part of the agreement is for the school board to pay us expenses based on their last standalone election. Well, we didn't know if they were going to have an election in 2013 and then how far back would we go? Well, they did, so that was resolved. Also the e-poll books, we weren't sure which e-poll books we were going to use because the system that we had used previously, they worked but had a few bugs, weren't, weren't the best, and we did come up with a new um, company, um, Heart InterCivic, so we will be using those e-poll books. And then of course, last but not least, were the vote centers. We really wanted to include that in our agreement. And so those were the items that we ironed out. But basically, it will just state that the school district, um, their responsibilities will of course be to handle their publications with regard to school board members, um, and of course handle their petitions and, and what they would normally do with that process. They would provide their ballot language and or their candidates to us, um, you know, 30 days prior to the election so that we can get that uh, probably very large, very lengthy ballot prepared. And then also they'll respond to written questions for any technical assistance. Um, and really the rest of it is us, which is exciting. We will conduct all aspects of the election, um, including the publications, the maps, um, ordering of the ballot stock, arranging for the election officials, um, delivery of the supplies, packing of ballot boxes, um, putting together the election calendar, um, the vote centers, and of course distribution of election results. Um, and, and then also to the district, um, we will provide them with the results that evening as well um, for their particular candidates. And in the cost, the district agrees to pay the city 100% of the total cost of their last standalone election, which was May of this year. And that will be provided to us on November 30th. So I have a note in my calendar that um, we will get that dollar amount from them so we will know what our reimbursement will be. Um, we do know it will not, definitely will not be half of the election costs because we're going to really plan for a big election this year with the different candidates we will have, the, the different um, ballot questions, maybe charter revision amendments. So we know that we'll have a large turnout and we will be planning for that and spending for that accordingly. Um, and then once the election's complete, we invoice them uh, for that 100% amount, and uh, that's, that will be done. And the expenses include, you know, all the expenses to do with the ballot stock and printing, um, the different election officials that we'll need to hire for that day, uh, any overtime, supplies, you know, just printing, publications, everything to do with the election. But again, um, their share will just be what their standalone costs were for this year. Um, and we will have an addendum 
tonight to the agreement, which does list those vote centers that we just talked about and does um, replace Embrace Church with Gloria Day Lutheran Church. So we're, we'll be pleased to report um, that this evening as well and add that addendum to our agreement, get that signed and in writing. So any questions I can certainly answer. Are there any questions for Lori? Greg. Lori, one of the issues last time, I think I remember, it's been a while since we've hashed this over, but one of the things I remember from before was the uh, uneasy feeling about entering into agreement, not knowing what the cost of that election would be. Are we more comfortable now with the what we expect that cost to be? Well, you know what? I don't really know what the cost will be. I think it was, the question was, will it be half, won't it be half? Um, and we now we do know since they did hold their election that we will get that payment. Our costs will be, you know, obviously greater than their costs. We have more of the issues. We'll have, you know, the majority of the ballot by far. You know, we know it won't be half. And um, there's some things that, that I would like to do a little differently this year than we've done in past elections. And just one for an example um, that, that we'll probably end up with the cost on is just to purchase track phones for all of the workers. You know, last... Um, when we had our last joint election, getting a hold of workers was a challenge. We would call a cell phone number they gave us. Oh, well, she left that at home. This is her husband. And, you know, we try to call the school offices to get a hold of people. That was really difficult. So that's one thing where we're willing to spend more money to do it right. Um, and we're also going to hire um, runners that will be in charge of different quadrants of the city. So if we have a need for something to go to a certain vote center, that person will be in charge and we'll take it out there. We'll have, you know, more of a, um, we'll know exactly which petitions are going where. And even our expenses for our, our e poll book system may be a little bit more, but it will definitely be worth it because they can offer us so much more um, as far as accountability and tracking those petitions. We will be able to see exactly when we're getting down um, in numbers if that is indeed the case, but we're going to plan big. Um, for this election. So, I mean, we won't know. We have put in our election costs in the budget, and I can't come up with a number in my head right now of what that is. Um, but we did, you know, we did plan, you know, we did plan big because we want this to go well, and we know it will be a big turnout. I don't know if that really answered. We don't really know the expenses at this time from the school. Councilor Rolfing, please, Rex. Yes, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I also remember reading as I was preparing here for um, that the these polling places are going to be used for everything but the general elections. Well, actually, are they going to be used for? They will use them for the general, but but Bob Litz has stated he will definitely need additional, additional vote centers. You know, not only obviously out in the outlying county areas, but even in in the city of Sioux Falls. You know, he he will utilize these thirteen, but he may add. You know, Central Sioux Falls, maybe he'll add two more or, you know, but at least people know that they can always go to these 13, that if, if they work by First Lutheran Church, we here at the Carnegie, we, we know we can always go to First Lutheran Church. Um, there might be more. Even in a general election? Yes. Okay. That's, yes. A, that's a good point. No, okay. that's a good question. That would be and, great. And he is, you know, he's a huge advocate of the e-poll books as well and, and is actually going to, um, I believe they're in the process of, purchasing e-poll books, um, and that's something that uh, we'll utilize. You know, we will, the school will, the county will. So, so basically then in a, in a general election, a larger election, presidential, you know, that kind of thing. Sure. All we're going to do is open up more polling places. More. Not, we're not going to go back to the, uh, you have to go to your place and that no, kind of thing. No, not at all. I think that would really be taking a step back. And yes. I kind of like to, to look at these as our core vote centers, that we'll always have these core vote centers. And when it's our election, this is what we'll need. When it's a school district, I assume this is what they'll need. But then when it's a, a general or primary, um, I'm not sure what he'll do for the primary, but that will be, you know, he'll use these core 13 and then add on to that as needed. Councilor Aguilar. Lori, will, who else does this have to go before? Will it go before the school board? Well, this went before the school board last, I think it was last October or September. And then when it came here, we had, you know, so many questions. And so the agreement itself, the way it's written, has been signed um, by the school district. But the addendum will need to, um, and then we'll need, you know, we'll get our signature on the agreement. But then the addendum will also need to be signed by the school district. And Dave, I assume we'll just... 
we'll do our signatures and then forward it on to the school district for theirs. And Dave has been in uh, contact with the um, attorney representing the school school board as well. Please. So will they, do we have them in agreement that they will use these vote serve centers rather than school buildings at, when they have the elections on their own? Yes, we, you know, we um, have verbally, they have agreed to this many times and they know that this is something that we were working on. Um, and Dave has been in contact with their legal advisor as well and, and she knows this is coming forth. You know, they, of course, they love to use the schools and when they hold their elections, generally there's not school in place and it just, you know, I think they realize too that it's difficult for the uh, November elections for the general and then also for our elections, it's difficult to hold them in schools as was evidenced um, at our last election. Thank you. Good, I think to, to touch on that a little bit more, Sue, I think I need to thank you because you were one of the drivers on this thing. And I know I met with you and, and with the city attorneys and one thing we wanted to always make sure of that the concept of vote centers was good, but we, had, we all decided that we'd practiced enough. And the bottom line was this has gotta be simple for the citizens of Sioux Falls. One of the greatest rights that we have as citizens is the right to vote. So we, and we need to apply the KISS principle to keep it simple principle to this for our citizens so they are aware that they can go to all of these vote centers all the time for all the elections that we have coming up. And I think this is a big step for that. And I'd like to thank the parties that were involved uh, from the school system to the county to Bob Litz and the team and, and the guidance that we had from the uh, previous leadership on the council. So it's a great story, Lori, and I'm glad that we're gonna be dealing with it here now. Thank you. Me too. Okay. Thank you. Next, another very exciting topic for some of us, and that's the uh, monthly financial report. Welcome, Tom. I think Tracy owes you a lot for this. You've been taking a lot of bullets here the past couple of weeks. Good afternoon. Tom Huber with the finance office. Uh, let's just keep the good news going. <laughs> so uh, the, uh, this is a timely financial report because it presents a backdrop for the 2014 budget process that we're going go to go through tonight or the final part of the 2014 budget process tonight. And the August report continues to show that uh, uh, we have a very strong local economy and uh, that the city is in solid financial position. Looking first to uh, the Sioux Falls MSA unemployment rate, uh, you will notice that the uh, unemployment rate has dipped down to 3%. It's the green bar uh, on this chart uh, as of the current measure, which is the end of July. Uh, and that's uh, indicative of the number of people employed has increased over 5,000 uh, for the Sioux Falls MSA since July of last year. So strong employment growth, uh, a good unemployment rate falling, and as you can see, compares very well to both uh, 2011 in blue and 2012 in red. It also compares very well on a state and national basis. Another indicator for our economic strength is building permits continue to run at a very rapid pace. At uh, $446.8 million permitted in valuations uh, year to date, uh, through August, it's nearing the same amount that was permitted all of last year, and we still have four months uh, this year to go. So uh, very good news. You can see that green bar starting to almost uh, overtake the red bar in December, the red bar indicating 2012, the green bar in August and 2013. Sales tax collections, uh, another key indicator of our financial strength uh, in, in the local economy. Over the past 12 months, August through August, general sales tax collections have grown by 6.4%. Uh, on a more direct indicator to the city budget inside your report, uh, you'll see that including audits, sales tax uh, collections year to date, uh, January through August uh, grew by 7.7%. So solid growth in, in sales tax collections. Another indicator is entertainment tax collections. Uh, entertainment tax collections are reflective more of the discretionary type of spending based on the items that are taxed 
And uh, again, this indicator remains solid at uh, a 5.6% over the last 12 month rolling period. Uh, it re still remains off the high established at the end of last year, but uh, solid growth nonetheless. Is that being the lead in, switching to looking at uh, the budget impact uh, or where we are with the budget uh, performance uh, to date? Uh, the charts above re uh, reflect the uh, year to date results of the city's operating budget. Um, operating budgeted revenues that are 62% collected to budget uh, year to date, and uh, year to date expenses at 63% uh, of budget are both tracking uh, right in line with budgetary expectations. So uh, again, the budget, exp budget uh, is, is uh, doing very well, uh, the economy is doing very well. And uh, in the report right up, we highlight the investments being made in street maintenance projects this year. You'll notice that over 905 blocks of street maintenance improvements are being made and we kind of go through a list in the report of, of those projects. With that, I'll answer any questions. Are there any questions for Tom? Kermit, please. Uh, Tom, this is just a um, very, very specific question. Um, the Sioux Falls City Council appropriated $500,000 for the indoor ice rink and also $500,000 for the indoor tennis courts. Have we uh, given them the money yet or not? No, we have not. Uh, those projects are still, that, those were capital projects. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, that was the city's commitment in the partnership, and uh, to date, we have not spent any of those. Okay, dollars. thank you. Councilor Rolfing, please. Hi, Tom. Thank you. Um, I noticed that our, um, our, our available fund balance has slipped before, below 25%. Um, <clears throat> that scares me a little bit. Uh, what's, what's the reason for that? Is that uh, some cap, some funds that we're waiting to come in? Right. We did, uh, the expenditures include the budget supplement that was done for the, uh, uh, for the timber strike. Timber strike. And uh, the revenues have not been adjusted to reflect that as we uh, uh, wait to receive the full revenue. So we are starting to see uh, some of the money come in now. So as soon as we, uh, in September, that, that will possibly, that, well, that will turn around as we start to see uh, the federal reimbursement for Okay. A federal FEMA reimbursement, I guess. Okay. Councilor Anderson. Tom, on uh, arterial street funding, um, the 0.92% sales tax, before 09 was the dedicated funding for arterial streets. Could I get the amounts that were uh, assigned between 03 and 08? on that point nine two. Yeah, I'm sure we can look back and, and pull some figures on that. Would, if you could give us some time to, to, keep, to go back and, and search the records for those, I'm sure that uh, we could try to pull through them and see what we come up with. Appreciate it, thank you. Are there any other questions for Tom? There being none, thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. Okay, that does end our presentations, but I do have, uh, if there is any uh, uh, council open discussion here. Councilor Staggers, please. Yes, I think uh, everybody on the council has received um, some amendments that I'm gonna be proposing this evening, but there's just a few amendments that are not probably very clear. And I just wanted to briefly say something about those amendments. Please. For example, Amendment D. Excuse Amend me, could you pull the microphone a little bit closer? Yeah, I'm having sure. problems. Thanks, Amendment, Kermit. Amendment D. Okay. Uh, Amendment D talks about moving $114,000 from uh, 2018 to 2014. This is for a possible indoor pool. And what that's dealing with, the 114000 is with a UV disinfection system. So, um, it doesn't say that in the amendment, but that's what it's about, to provide greater safety for those people using the pool. Um, that's Amendment D. Um, amendment I uh, deals with deleting $136,000 for the Sioux Falls YMCA Middle School Program. Um, I wanted to emphasize that's an after-school program that the city is, is funding 
and which is probably more appropriate for the school district to do. Um, Amendment L deals with deleting $900,000. Uh, and that deals with a possible pedestrian bridge. And Amendment P, this is kind of tricky, Amendment P. Amendment P uh, deletes money for the arena for um, an air conditioning system and also for lower seats and risers. Um, the reason for that is because, you know, we don't want to jazz up the arena and then have people want to use the arena when we want them to use the event center. So that's just completely deleting that. And then also at the same time, uh, the Amendment P transfers the parking which was under the arena to, to refurbish some of the parking to the event center. I don't know if that's clear to everybody, but that's what Amendment P deals with. And Amendment T, uh, deals with the uh, citywide water main replacement. Oftentimes we have public works talking about the various enterprise funds. We don't use any sales tax money. We use enterprise funds. Well, sometimes they do use sales tax funds. And so this is deleting the sales tax funding for it and having them rely exclusively on the enterprise fund. And Amendment U deals with the Washington Pavilion building improvements, which are, quite frankly, just very unclear. They're asking for various monies, and uh, it's not clear what they want to use them for. Amendment V uh, is dealing with the health care workers. The five uh, health care workers, they want to make full time. Um, I've received correspondence from uh, somebody who works down there, and, and they're against this. And also at the same time, I don't think this is the best time for us to make them full time. They're contract workers right now, but we have the uncertainty of Obamacare, so maybe we ought to wait on that. And we're almost done here. Amendment D uh, deals with the Spencer uh, Dog Park, um, deleting everything except for the money, the $194,000 for a restroom. That's still in there. Amendment X. Um, also is deleting money. It's, there's, there's no real clear explanation as to what they want to use all this money for, except they do talk about a restroom. So the restroom is kept in there. And the rest, where they don't really explain anything, is deleted. And then Amendment Y um, also is dealing with the water wreck. And um, Amendment Y is saying you can't use the sales tax funding. You've got to use the enterprise funds. So those are a number of amendments which I thought I should probably say something about because it's not entirely clear when you read this uh, amendment. Also, let me mention, too, hey, there's a good number of amendments, and I'm sure there are some amendments you probably might disagree with, but there might be some amendments you might agree with. And if you do agree, I would certainly appreciate uh, a second. Does anybody have any questions? Are there any con questions for Councilor Staggers? Councilor Jameson, please. Kermit I, yes. Kermit, I couldn't keep up with all those notes. I tried my best, but uh, will they be explained on the uh, hard copy sheets that we'll receive? Or are you just giving these ad lib to us now with the hopes well, of this is this are the amendments that were are drawn up. This is the way they're going to be presented tonight. Yes. But these notes that you're adding now, is this the only time that we'll get those notes? Or will they be written out in any other way? No. I, no, they won't. Mm -mm. But uh, if I introduce an amendment and you're not quite sure what, what it's really all about, please ask me. I'd be more than happy to explain it. Yeah. Sue? I've requested that uh, Dave Bixler have hard copies of the amendments at our seats tonight at 7. Oh, you don't have hard? Did you get a co You didn't get hot copies of these? We got the email oh, with okay. it. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. so we all had the opportunity to yes. see them last week, but sure. I think it would be helpful to have a hard copy sure. at our seat at 7. And he'll have those for us then, Sue? Yeah, Bixler is going to do that for us. Thank that's, you, gentlemen. That's a good idea. Are there any other con questions for Councilor Steggers? Okay, is there anything else before this council? 
Okay, uh, we do have a, a need here to go into an executive session. Uh, Councilor Karski? I'd like to make a motion that we go into ex executive session pursuant to South Dakota Codified Law 1 dash 25 dash 2 1 second Rolfing there's been a motion um, and a second uh, do we need a roll call on that all in favor aye aye, aye. opposed we will go into an executive session here so we do need to clear with the exception of those that are involved uh, once we come back from the executive session we need about 10 minutes to set up for the committee meeting which will follow immediately after this please note the time <laughs>